if you haven't watched our first session on plc tutorial for a beginner i highly recommend you to go back and watch first tutorial and then come up here before starting today's class i request you if you haven't subscribed our youtube channel consider subscribing and turn on your notification so that you don't miss any update now is the time to make our setup ready for This is our DIN rail. If you're wondering what is DIN rail, DIN rail is a metal rail that is used for mounting circuit breaker and other industrial control equipment inside the equipment rack. You are going to see every component that is going to be installed and how these components are actually sharing the data and power with each other. We are going to install CPU first into the DIN rail. First, we are going to open this mechanical latch. Here we go. Then you're gonna close it, it will tight up that CPU into the DID rail. Now for the power connection. There was a question in last class how CPU is sharing the power with other I.O. modules. So now I'm gonna show you, here is the trick. So CPU is sharing its data and its power by using this port. Now we are gonna connect next I.O. module in line and you will see how these are gonna be connected. So you can see here. This, this port will be definitely getting into this slot. And by this way, this CPU will share the data to this IO module. Now we are gonna connect it in front of you so that you can visualize it. Here we go. So now this connection is already made. And similar way, this connection will be a connection for other I.O. module that will connect on to the DIN rail. So here we go, there is another I.O. module that's ready. We are going to connect it in line with the first I.O. module. I hope this question is very much clear to you how EPU is sharing the data and power with other I.O. modules. Now to power up all the CPUs and I.O. modules, we need a power supply. So the first thing first, we are gonna power up our CPU by using this power supply. So then this CPU is already connected. I showed you how it's connected to the other I.O. module to share the power and data. Now it's the time to make the cable connection. We will be doing it bit fast so that we don't waste any time here. So we are going to close it because there is no other IO modules in line. So we have to close this. Case. If you already watched our last video about how to take a Siemens PLC pack up, then you might be already aware that, that we are using MPI cable in the case of S7 300 PLC and 400 PLC. But which cable we will be using for connection of S7 1200 PLC and our laptop in the case of S7 1200 PLC. So the cable we will be using in the case of S7 1200 PLC is Ethernet cable. Now, in order to program your PLC, or in order to see what is inside your PLC, all you have to do is, you have to have a connection with your laptop and your PLC. For that, all you have to do is, there is an Ethernet port here. You can see here, this is the Ethernet port. So, we have to make a connection right there. Other end of that cable will connect to the laptop. And for that, we are going to make a connection like this. Now our laptop and our PLC is connected. So, now we are going to open up our Tia Portal software. Our software is now open up. Is the time to click on create a new project. Name it as you like, whatever name you want. We are naming it as a test one. And then we are gonna click on create so now next step you have to go to the devices and add device just select on that you will find all CPUs that are available in Siemens PLCs like if we talk about 1200 1500 300 400 200 so this Tia portal is a software that will give you an ability to program all PLCs available from Siemens so this is very interesting thing 
Not only that, you can also program HMIs, PC systems and other devices. We are not going to talk about that in today's class. In this class, we are going to program a very, very simple S7-1200 PLC program. So we are selecting a CPU. Any CPU you want, you can select based on your needs, whatever you have actually. But now we are going to make sure which CPU we have. So our CPU is 1214C. So we have to see whether we have 1214C here or not. So 1214C, there are two different types. So we have to make sure which one is R. So we have selected exactly the same CPU with the same order number to make sure what we have actual hardware, we are configuring the same in our software. So we have to just go in there, project view, click on that. We have to make sure the device configuration so just click on device configuration first. Yes, what we have now, what we have actual in the hardware, we are going to make sure we have that already on our software hardware configuration. So for that, we have to see again our IO modules. 1BH30 is right there. So we have selected one IO module, one BH30. You have seen that we have two IO modules, two digital in and out modules. And the first one we have already selected. And another one is you can see here is 2231BL300XB0. So we are gonna move this and put it into the software hardware configuration. So now our system configuration, our hardware configuration for system, what we have actual is already ready for sure. If you're going to talk to this CPU or this PLC, there should be some address, right? By which it is identified. And every S7 1200 PLC, every 1200 PLC have a specific IP by which you're going to identify it. So we are going to define an IP address here make sure whatever is the real hardware address or real hardware ip of a plc you have to identify here that's very important oh your laptop is connected to that cpu if you are not on the same network you can't talk to that plc so two devices on the network can only talk to each other if they are on the same network so we have to specify any IP that is on the same network. For that, we have to go to the Open Network and Sharing Center, open it up and go to the adopter set LAN Local Area Connection, first one, Properties, and then you have to go to the IP version 4, double click on that, and here is what you have to specify any IP with the same network, 192.168 dot zero dot anything except what you have with your plc and except what you have on your network because we are having two devices on the network so it's fine to select any other number than that cpu then uh, the plc one so we are gonna select 100 here subnet mask it should be the default one don't need to change anything just select on okay and now you are on the same network as a plc so now this system can talk to that plc so that's how we are going to configure our system go to the program blocks go to the main double click on that and add some networks we are going to talk about very 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 simple project in first class we are not here to talk about anything advanced we are going to take one single input it's just like a fan, it's just like a light bulb. When you turn it on, it will turn on. When you turn it off, it will turn off. For example, if in the case of light, if you turn it on, it will turn on. In the case of fan, if you turn it on, it will be on. And if you turn it off, it will be off. So same case here, we have to make sure till the time input is there, output will remain high. For that, we are going to take one input in connection to that input there is an output so in a siemens there is a way to identify inputs and outputs 
if you talk about i0.0 this is going to be the first digital input i for input 0.0, .0 is 0 is first 0 is will define the byte number and the second one will define the bit number so every byte have 8 bits in that when we have 8 bits like for example 0.0, .0 to 0 0.7 and then next will be 1.0 and same way it will turn it will reach to 1.7 and then 2.0 to 2.7 and it will go on and on like this so this is the address but for simplicity we are just gonna take our first input i 0.0 i 0.0 is input that is coming from input module digital io module so then you if you have to define the tag for that you can make sure like whatever for example input one or input whatever the name you have to give it so that other guy who is coming in later on and seeing your code he should not be like in a crazy mind so he should be very much clear what you have in your code now for output identification we have outputs like q for output 0.0, .0 for first and similar up to 0.7 and then 1.0 to 1.7 and then 2.0 similar fashion so we have identified q 0.0, .0 our first output and we have to define a name for that so remember like whatever name you have actually so you can define so we are just gonna give it output one so now uh, now our simple program is almost ready this is a selector switch i0.0 .0. it is connected to i0.0 .0. and this is light indication and is connected to the output q0.0 .0. next thing we will download that program to the cpu so for that what we have to do just click on download and select here interface profinet so in order to simulate it this i0.0 .0, when we will turn it on we have to turn on the selector so when we turn on the selector you can see the light is also on now so when we turn it off now we are going to turn it off you can see the light will also be off so it's similar way you can see the similar fashion into the programming when we are going to turn on the selector button similar way you can see into the online view output is also high so that's what we have to program in today's class thanks for watching this video till next video take care and allah hafiz